This is Micro Ninjago City, the mini modular depicting 2017's iconic set all while fitting in the palm of your hand. I built this set in a previous video, but now there are three more sets to add to this collection. So today we're going to open up, build and take a look at this Micro City collection and many of the possible combinations you can get from these sets. Now let's get into it. First to arrive was Micro Ninjago City Docks, the smallest of the bunch with just 275 pieces. Opening it up, we've got six bags of parts and the instructions. Twenty minutes later, a micro dock is complete. The wooden dock uses studs, which work great, and I love the little crane next to it, which can move around. Of course, we have Dareth's Mojo Dojo here, with a pathway leading up to the arcade above. I love how the big pig balloon has been represented here, and the front of the arcade is well done too, complete with the vending machine. Below that, there's even a small opening for the sculptor's shop. We've got the house in the middle sat above the market stalls, and a small boat in the water docked below Mistake's shop. There's the steps up to the map room here, and the balcony looking out over the city, with a ladder leading up to the famous tea shop. The window has been replaced by a white block, which is a shame, but out of the front we've got another walkway that can link to another city. One of my favourite details is this green wolverine claw representing a palm leaf. What a great use of parts. It easily plugs into the original Micro City set like so, and the two flow together nicely whichever side you decide to place docks. I think the original docks is a really underrated set. The quieter, more open build it has adds a nice contrast to the busier city, and the micro scale version has captured that nicely. From the smallest to the biggest, next up is Micro Ninjago City Gardens. With 376 pieces, we get 8 bags of parts to get stuck in and build the third Micro City. I don't actually own the original garden set, so it was fun seeing this one come together, and the finished product is wonderful. It's bright and colourful, and of course has this small temple area at the side, with red bridges and the Zane statue represented by a grey micro figure. You can take it off to move it around, or just have it on its own, and it is a nice peaceful build to have on display. What's left behind is the big garden's corner piece. There's a lot of open space at the bottom, with food stalls and some plant life floating in the water. The big tree in the middle has turned out great using those lime green plant pieces, with the open space around it to walk around in and growing up into the level above. We've got Chen's noodle house up here, and the Ice Planet ice cream shop over here as well. The Ninjago Museum is my favourite part, I think this has been captured perfectly. It's a nice keyed orange just like the big set, with turquoise window frames and its own balcony as well. The greenhouse next to it also has a balcony, which you can remove really easily like so. Above the museum is the ninja zone, with its big tower on top, which the designer did a brilliant job with, capturing its unique shape and scaling it down well. And just like the original set, it is taller than the first city, ever so slightly thanks to the tower. So micro gardens for me, easily the best of the three we've looked at so far. Finally, it's time for Micro Ninjago City Markets, the scaled down version of the biggest Ninjago set ever made. With 365 pieces, there are 7 bags inside the box to build it up. Again, I don't own the regular market, so seeing this come together was nice and fun. The finished product once again is much more colourful than the first two sets. We've got the wide, empty walkway area at the bottom here, with the market stall and all the shops like the bakery and blacksmith shop here. There's another boat here, which can actually fit under the bridge, which is nice to see. Running along the middle is the yellow cable car, that you can slide up and down to carry people to the upper levels. The bulk store is my favourite part of this one. It's turned out brilliantly, complete with the cable car station and lift up into the store back here. The walkway then leads all the way from here around to Laffy's Club, complete with the bridge just like the normal set. The glittery window pieces look great, and above it all we've got the seafood restaurant with its squid mascot on the roof. Sadly though, there's no room for the flushing toilet. And so, here is the full Micro City collection altogether. What a great little set of builds, with plenty of different layouts you can make. Let's start with the default one shown in the instructions, which forms an L shape with city on the far left here, followed by docks, gardens, and then markets. It's nice having them all in order here, you get this big open section at the back. Straight line combinations make for some good skylines. You could have city, docks, markets, gardens, though with the temple section removed as its own display, or city, markets, docks, gardens, which works well with the temple attached or separate. You could have gardens, docks, market, city, or gardens, markets, docks, city as well. The combination I really like is this one linking the two corner pieces together with docks and markets running side by side. 
adding the temple from gardens to the side of docks brings both sides of the city to the same length too, which is really cool. You do have to take the balcony and this green piece off of docks to make it work, but you can put one here so that docks has an endpoint, giving a safety barrier for people to admire the view of the temple. One thing I don't like though is how Markets kind of closes the whole thing up. The way the corner pieces and docks are designed, you get a ring of city surrounding nice open water. But then Market sort of inverts that and is instead open from the opposite side, with the backs of all these buildings directly facing docks. I think having the open ends of markets and docks facing each other looks much better, but there's no way to do that and have the markets pathways link up due to it basically being two corner pieces linked together with this walkway. Still, it's not a huge deal and definitely makes for a nice layout, completing the two corner pieces and leaving room beyond these two for your imagination to go wild. Of course you can swap around the four sets for different variations on this style, like having docks, gardens, city, markets, or markets, city, gardens, docks, but I personally think it works best with the movie cities facing the other two. I think the best option overall though is to keep them as two separate sections. City and docks go together perfectly. The original sets were obviously designed as a pair, the box art for docks literally shows where they connect, and they flow together great. Gardens and markets also fit together very nicely. They're pretty distinct from the other two as well, they're much more colourful and neither of them perfectly line up with the other cities. So having them as two separate display pieces makes for a really good look. You could have them facing each other like this, or just entirely apart. Or you could attach city to markets here, which also makes for a pretty good look, although it's not as convenient to display. There are a lot of ways you can connect these, but I'm only interested in ones where the pathways between each city actually line up, giving a consistent walkway around the whole lot. How you get these is a bit of an issue though. Each one is available from LEGO Insiders for 2,300 points. To put that in perspective, if you bought Ninjago City Gardens, you'd only have enough points to get one of these, and that's frankly insane. So instead, I bought the first three from eBay and then just used points to get markets. I would love to see LEGO release them officially as a kind of full micro Ninjago City collection set for like $100 in a year or two, as the insider's reward threshold is incredibly high and definitely makes it difficult for a lot of people to obtain every set, even if they want them all. It's a great collection to have and honestly makes me want a lot more mini modular sets, just like the classic 2012 version. They provide a great alternative to the big city sets if you're lacking space or just aren't interested in giant display models. All of them capture the look of their respective set excellently and work well as separate models or as one complete block. I'm really happy with how they turned out and if we get more Ninjago cities in the future, I hope they also get the same treatment. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and click on screen now to check out another video. Thanks for watching.